Have you ever been under a tree in the fall and watched as a shower of leaves fell all around you? It feels like a curtain of leaves has been pulled in front of your eyes. Artists such as Gustav Klimt, Vincent van Gogh, and Georgia O'Keeffe often use tree and leaf imagery in their work. Using pressed or fresh leaves will make a monoprint on translucent paper. And when many prints are hung chain-like, they will create a curtain of leaves. This is translucent marker paper, meaning light can pass through it. Since it's translucent, we can use both sides of the paper to make prints. This way, a subtle layered effect is created, almost like watching those leaves fall on a sunny day. I've gathered press leaves for my print, but paper leaves, fresh leaves, or even leaf stamps will work. This is a Blick Easy Cut printing block. This block is most often used to make a linoleum print with linoleum cutters. But for this project, it's our printing plate. I'm going to start by adding a thin line of paint across the top of my plate. I'm using Blick acrylics. These are our student acrylic. They're a little bit thinner, and uh, a little bit thinner paint works really well for this process. So we're not going to need a lot of paint. I'm going to just put them right on the plate. Uh, depending on your climate, you might need to spritz just a little water on your plate if you think that this is a little drier than you need it to be. So what I'm going to do is just use my brayer. I'm going to pull straight down to the bottom of the plate. And yes, these colors are going to blend as I roll. That's part of the fun. Okay. Um, then I'm going to start adding some textures. This is a rubber comb that you can pull through the plate and make a design there on the side. You can use rubber shapers. You can use your fingers. Um, the end of a paintbrush works great to pull that off. This is a monoprint, just like any other monoprint. This is a texture plate, a little plastic plate. I'm going to add a little bit of texture with that. This will lift the paint off where I've pressed it. And then I'm going to start adding my leaves. I put a maple leaf there in the middle, kind of a focal point. This is a little grape vine leaf. I don't know, hydrangea, I believe, for this one. And then all we're going to do is press the paper onto the plate. Just gently lay it there. We're just going to go over it with our hands. Not going to do anything fancy. I have chosen for this print to leave the leaves on the plate. So they're going to act as a resist. They're, we're going to get a non-printed area in the shape of a leaf on this print. So once you think you've hit every area with your hands, we're just going to slowly peel that paper off. There's my maple leaf. Okay, And I'm going to lay this aside to dry so that I can print the other side. Now these leaves have picked up paint, obviously, uh, from, the, from the plate. So I can use these in a next print if I'd like to by placing them paint side up. So I'm going to save those for next print. After both sides of the print are dry, they can be framed just using thin woodsy craft sticks. You just use four craft sticks, a little bit of Aileen's quick dry tacky glue, and a trim around the edge with your X-Acto knife. If you have younger students, they can build the print in a four and a half inch square that they've already cut. So they just cut out their square in four and a half inches and these will fit perfectly. When you're done making the square prints, they can be made into a chain or a curtain simply by punching a hole in the center, top and bottom of the print with a blunt needle and connecting with a little wax linen thread. Hang them from a branch for added beauty. They also look beautiful hanging in a window. You can use the same process for making blank cards or printing on fabric using textile paints. For detailed instructions, a materials list, and teaching standards, please visit dickblick.com 
keyword search, Curtain of Leaves.